last time on Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Do you suffer from a lack of a father figure? Do you have clinical depression? This time on Pokemon Infinite Fusion. I decided I didn't suffer enough last time, so we're going for hard mode. We've got a rival Blue Moon. We start off with a Furret, sad hamster choice. We get going along to a Cam Sutton. He's still on the run, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta find him. And pretty much a seal, the Dugong. While we're here, you might as well hit that subscribe button for more content like this as we challenge Blue Moon for the first time, who has a fur door. Kind of a cool fusion. Not gonna lie, I didn't expect a bunch, but pretty sweet. Hit him with an icy wind, slow that speed down two stages. Scratch is doing good, quick attack hurts, and then another. Now, the run would normally end, but we don't have Pokeballs yet, so fortunately this hardcore randomized Narlock on hard mode is not over. As we get the parcel and some DNA splicers, hook it back up to Oak. He now gives us the Pokeballs, so the run is officially started. Next thing we die to, we will lose a Pokemon. Speaking of which, our first random encounter is a Mimikyu. Really cool. Get him on the team, and we jump right over to the next route to catch our second. Just kidding. We don't catch Fuse Pokemon around here, not in this run at least. And secondly, we do find a Nidoking. If you want to look at all the rules I have in place, you can check the description below as I'm hit with a double kick. Nidoking is pretty tough catch, I can't lie, so these Pokeballs come through, honestly. The Premier fumbled, but the one Pokeball pulled through. And on Route 2, we find a Noivern. This is... this is something. So we start the fight off with 16 Pokeballs. After a while, we do finally catch it. And we get to look at these really cool sprites designed. I opt to go for this one with his wings out. I think that's pretty sweet. I want to die. And uh, yeah, he may want to die, but he's our first fused Pokemon. Not gonna complain there, as Slowbro is another team member we add. We combine the Dugong and the Nido King, and we get that beauty. Now Brock, our first gym leader, leads with this Mystic. Definitely like the vibes on this Pokemon, it fits well, but it doesn't fit well against our Dark-type Bite. Now, in hard mode, the gym trainers are actually a little bit over-leveled the cap that we can go to. Uh, I'm a little confused on this, because earlier in the run it wasn't this way, but later in the game it was working, so that's good. In Rock Tunnel, Team Rocket's causing some trouble. They're trying to fuse three Pokemon. This is a freak of nature type of sore thing and we are challenged by this scientist they're making him do their bidding that's not cool we're gonna have to take out his hoot rogue and a wing attack does super damage my disguise is busted and then a second one takes it down super nerd that supercomputer just exploded they're not getting their three times fusion anytime soon but we're gonna get something soon an infernape our first cool looking starter, I love this sprite, and after a bunch of Pokeballs, we get him and we fuse him, hey, and yeah. So Misty's up, she leans with her Cotton Swine, I like the little cloud, showing like he's an almost super tall mountain. Now he gets burned and hurt bad, but he heals up, a couple flame wheels though, take it down, Trevor the Ace comes out. And I'm a little low, so I switch out to Shook to finish it off. And for a second of hesitating, I just opt for a bite, and we get our second badge. I try to continue along, but Blue Moon cuts me off, and he says it's battle time. His Whimsitar is going to catch a Flame Wheel and go back into its Pokeball. His Grousekin, while absolutely awesome, is no match for pretty much Seal. So Ferdor comes in, gets us to 5, Shook... You know, with the Disguise, it's just such a reliable Pokemon to switch out to. And while we're not doing a ton of damage with Bite to this Lopril, it is slowly going down as it does endure and hang on. Quick Attack does connect, but the Disguise is broken once again. We are fine. Now, Fury Swipes feels like it hit a hundred times here, 
and we are left kind of low, and then a quick attack gets me to three, but thankfully Air Cutter saves us as we continue along to find our next encounter, Gengar. And this man needs to brush his teeth, because those things are wild. After adding Gengar and defeating Pac-Man, Bill unfuses with the Rhydon, gives us the SS ticket, and we proceed along. Grovile, I like to see it. Infernbro knows hypnosis at this point, so we put it to sleep, and it makes catching Pokemon a lot easier. And normally, I would shorten the battle and show you how I catch a Pokemon, but from you two, we're gonna have to just admire this beauty, because catching a legendary is always special. So we switch out to Gengar. Yes, I should have these Pokemon fused by now, but I haven't been able to get to the next town to buy Splicers. Now what I'm trying to do here is get the Mewtwo to fall asleep, but it keeps setting up safeguards, so it's making it pretty annoying. I decide to get it super low with Infernbro, and I still keep trying to go for the on, even though the safeguard was up. I don't know what I was thinking here. So I start chucking some balls. He keeps trying to set up this safeguard, making it so annoying, and then Yawn gets disabled. I'm still trying to outsmart this Mewtwo by switching out, switching back in, but yep, yeah, there's Safeguard again. Frustrated at this point and still not really paying attention, I still switch out to Inferno, bro, and I get back to throwing Great Balls. And, I mean, it's Mewtwo. His catch rate in itself is already, like, super, super low, so I'm not surprised he's busting out of these Great Balls over and over again. Fortunately, we do finally catch it. Yeah, so that was scary. Um, well, I don't think this encounter could ever have possibly lived up to Mewtwo, but we get an area dose, and we fuse our Mewtwo with our Gengar, and we get... Yeah, I mean, pretty much, right? And then Grovile and area dose... That's cool too, I guess. So we got our stay on the SS Sand to start. I come over here and I jam like I normally do, and then Blue Moon says, how do you do? He leads with his Sand Doof. I actually really like the Porcupine vibe from this Pokemon. It takes a lot of damage, and then he decides to heal up. Another Water Pulse takes it down, as this Trinax is next. That kind of rhymed. Flame Wheel's gonna be four time effective, so he goes down quickly. As the Ferdor comes back, you'll see this man multiple times, and fortunately for us, Flame Wheel's doing good damage, though it is a tanky Pokemon. This Sun Gun. It's a scary guy. I have to switch out in fear of fainting. I go for an Aurora Beam, and then thankfully it is effective. We rub the captain's back, and he teaches us how to cut. Kind of strange. We get off the inn, and we go to Surge's Palace. Now this man leads with a Clink Ray, the normal steel type can be kind of intimidating, and then the gear grind does always hit twice, but... After being put in a bind, I hit a nice powerful flame wheel, does over half, much like almost all the trainers in this game do, he heals, and then he's smart enough to switch out so this Pokemon can take the hit. It is burned, and two flame wheels take us down, but we get static. A little unfortunate, we have this Diggrit up next, and it hits a sucker punch that does big damage. It heals with a berry. I'm left on five, slowed down. I have to switch out. Now, pretty much a seal comes in. I debate what to use. As he heals up, I hit an Aurora Beam, which does absolutely nothing. But then a double kick does big damage, leaving him very low in the red as I'm bited. And then one more double kick finishes the job. The Digger comes back out, hits a bulldoze, slows me down. But we finish the gym, and we can get to our next encounter, which is actually a Togetic. And it's a pretty cute Pokemon in this game, like, that's super cool. Now, this is also cool, albeit scary as hell. In Rock Tunnel, well, I find this Hone Edge. Unfortunately, I won't be using it, because we're catching the first Pokemon we see on each route. We're not getting gifts. I finally got a Rock Tunnel, and I proceed along my adventure. On the left of Lavender Town, I find a Zoroark. I poisoned it actually, did end up catching it though, 
We do lose the hilarious Togetic sprite, and I couldn't find the actual one for the bottom right, so we got that one instead. It's still pretty sweet, though. Gary's making Team Rocket pee off as we lead up with Erica to go on the sewer and scare them ourselves. We're making our way. I'm struggling with puzzles. Uh, yeah, big brain right here. After doing a little bit of training before I do fight Giovanni, I obtain a Septos, which is pretty sweet. Now, he's not happy to see me for the first time. He doesn't want to give up the Sylph Scope, so he's going to take us on. Now, his music in this game is absolutely awesome. You hear that? That's just sweet. So we take down his first Pokemon really easily. This Exus Seed is insanely strong, actually. But I'm thinking the Monk Turk could hit some big flame wheels, and it does. The Sharpivore, holy. I would have loved to have this Pokemon. Now I go for a flame wheel, not my best move, but it does burn. I am also hurt by a Shed Skin. His Ice Fang doesn't do much. I have Slack off at this point, so I can heal, which is very convenient. Zen Headbutt does good damage, Shed Skin hurts, the burn makes it faint, and that is fortunate for us as we defeat Giovanni. Erica thanks us for our help. We can grab that Sylph Scope on the table. Take a little look around, and then we decide it's time to fight Erica now. Now, as much as we appreciate our help, we need to take her down to proceed with our journey. This Gab Tile gets Poison Pointed, which was pretty fortunate. Aurora Beam does a lot. She switches out. If you couldn't tell, she's a Dragon-type gym leader. Now, Aurora Beam just OP for this point in the game for me. It is really just a carry carry move. As this sharp tum comes out, it catches one and it's not as effective. Its ice fangs are hurting. Thankfully my poison point does eventually work. I have to switch out to Shook. That disguise gets broken. Fortunately for me though, we don't get hurt. He heals with a berry. I fly up to avoid some more damage. Fly does okay. As the poison continues to tick, it's kind of a battle of endurance right now as I fly one last time and take the Shartum out. And we win. Proceed to save Mr. Fuji, who has the Pokemon Flute. We bust a little song for the Snorlax, which does randomize into a Halucha. And unlike the first Infinite Fusion video, we won't be catching this Pokemon. I'm gonna go for the grass further south on the route to see if we can get something better. And oh my dewey. Mew, my favorite mythic Pokemon. A leaf blade leaves it low in the red. And I just chuck an Ultra Ball and you know that rolls a few times and wow, mythics aren't that hard to catch, huh? Time to switch the team up a bit. We get this amazing thumbnail fusion. Just insane. And this one was a close second. Those are both insanely cool fusions as we encounter a Wigglytuff. And that's actually a pretty cool, you know, we'll add to the team. We'll fairy. We'll fairy action as a Magnazone's encountered and also thrown in. This is my favorite part of the game because you just get encounter after encounter as we get a Gyarados. Right after Gyarados, we have another one we can grab, which is a Smeargle. And, you know, we decide to switch up a little bit as Nido King and Gyarados fuse, and then we fuse the Noivern with the Mew. Next up, the Wigglytuff with the Mimikyu, and then lastly, the Sceptile with the Magnazone. And I have to say, we have some awesome fusions now as we take on Koga, who leads with his Kabura. Now, Kabura is going to be no match because... Yeah, when I fused the Pokemon, they actually got really over-leveled. I felt kind of bad. It was only for this gym, though, so... Ganark was about six levels over the cap. That's, uh... On me, I probably shouldn't have even used him, but he kind of just sweeps the gym. I think even if we didn't have him, we weren't going to suffer a loss to Koga, as he's pretty easy at this point in the game. Now, Blue Moon won't be as easy, because we are matched up on level. We caught up, he caught up. He's got his ditzy. I'm not intimidated though, because we got payback and we need some for that first battle. His C tar gets sent in, freezes me with Ice Beam. I actually get out right away, hit a payback, doesn't do a ton of damage, so I switch out to Magnetile. Leaf Blade does great damage. His Volca Eevee comes out, so I switch to Gara King to have that water type surf, and it actually doesn't do as much as I really thought it would, which is unfortunate. 
but a couple spam serves chip it down as I'm just getting slowly hurt. Earth power doesn't do much, fire spin is starting to stack up with how much it does as Surf finally takes it down. Now this Vapor Growth, kind of an intimidating type combo, but Discharge being neutral and then paralyzing after the second turn is very fortunate as we take down the starter just as easy. Now we have another battle of Giovanni and this one is a little bit different as we team up with our friend Blue Moon and uh, unfortunately he doesn't have the strongest Pokemon for this fight as he did when we just fought him. So we're putting work in on this Snarvor. This thing's an absolute tank. It goes down after a few Psycho Cuts and Land Raid is still on the field as he switches out to the Pine Kate. Exit Slash is very intimidating as well, but I think we have to get this Raticate Fusion out of here as it is very high in attack stat. Psycho Cut finally does take down that Rat Fusion as the Exit Slash is left on 1 HP. I'm left low, so I have to switch out to Genark. We take it down. Land Raid's left alone. It can't be safe for too long. We slow it down. It paralyzes. It's hit by a confused ray by our friend Blue Moon, and we finally do take out Giovanni and get gifted the Master Ball. Sabrina, I'm sorry. We're on a mission, and your Sand Tomb is not going to stop me from succeeding. So I lead with my Garriking. I hit a Surf that does fantastic damage as she heals up and sets up. Now, she can sit here and heal all day, but my fast little fusion is going to surf away as she switches out into a ground dragon fusion, making our attack neutral, but an ice fang is going to take it down. I feel like Donair is just a little bit of an improvement over that last Pokemon, but ice fang is still going to do good damage when it does connect, and it does two times out of four to get us that little round win, and then the sand tomb comes back, catches its fate. Now this Starlet, it's digging away, but we're going to blow it out of the ground with an Earth Power, doing decent damage, switching out to Genar just to be careful, because I hate being confused. I still end up getting confused, and this is a Stall-type Pokemon, of course, and I can't seem to not hit myself in confusion. I finally do bust out, hit a good one, it recovers, another Shadow Ball does good damage, it just keeps spam and recover, it's so annoying at this point. <laughs> It confuses me, and unfortunately our Genark's really good at hitting itself, so we see Mimitough for the first time. I do get confused, but fortunately Shadow Claw breaks through the first time as it keeps spamming recover. I hurt myself, the disguise breaks away thanks to that, and another Shadow Claw does connect. He's got to almost be out of some of those recovers, right? Well, not the Confuse Rays that is, but I do break through and I can learn recover myself. I find Blair or Blaine and I tell him to get his ass back to the gym because it's time to go down. Now he's got some Pokemon, that's all I gotta say. His Regikia is gonna get hit by a play rough. He's gonna switch out to his Manau. Manau is not gonna be as fortunate as it does faint to the play rough as Zekbok comes out. I hit a play rough, it doesn't do super damage as Zen Headbutt does quite a lot, and my Shadow Claws aren't doing much. I switch out to my Garriking, and his move actually didn't affect me, so I go for a couple Ice Beams. I'm doing chip damage. I do get him very low in the red, but he heals with Shed Skin. Red Pikia comes back out. Nice Ice Fang takes it down as the Corvior comes in. And now, I didn't know what type this was. I get so confused with some in this game, but fortunately, we were able to defeat it and the Zekbok, which came back right after, getting us the seventh gym badge. And Team Rocket is furthering along with their goal to fuse three Pokemon. They've captured three of the strongest Pokemon in the Kanto region, and they send them all out. Giovanni monologues. He goes, gym leaders, the Elite Four, there's not a single person who can stop me. And then he goes, so what do you expect to achieve here, Lacey Bear? The disrespect as he sends out this triple-fused Zap Mulkuno. I intimidate all three heads, fortunately, as it puts up enough pressure to break my bones. Now, Surf does good damage as I'm hit three times in a row and left at 54 health. I do get two Surfs off, which is great, 
and I knew I was going to have to sack a Pokemon or two here. Unfortunately, it did have to be Garaking. Now I send him Uvern, and I did teach it Surf as well. In anticipation for this fight, we take out the first head, but man, are we hurt. I go for another Surf, probably not the move as we do lose Muvern. I switch in Mimitoff just for the disguise. Now Zalpakuno Z is going to be getting this play rough as it faints. Unfortunately, the last head decides to roost, which kind of scares me. I go for a disable so it can't roost. The frozen ice beam. What a pain, as it does no damage, but I am stuck. Reflect, haze, everything you could ever not want to happen is happening. As I'm left extremely low, I switch in to my Munape. Now, we get ice beamed, it does good damage. I haven't really learned a better fire type move, so I still have flame wheel. It does nothing. Two ice beams hurts badly too. So I decide, Magnetile, it's your time to shine. As ice beam leaves me at 14 health, I know I can outspeed. And I go for a discharge that does connect and does take it out. As we beat Giovanni and his triple fused legendary monstrosity, the two birds flee, Moltres stays. There just done. He leaves Team Rocket and goes back to his gym to leave a normal life. And uh, we were coming to ruin it once again. We're going to be versing him. Now, his team is... Well, he's got Pokemon, but compared to what he just sent out, uh, nothing's nearly as intimidating as his Faras is catching this hands, and in hands I mean wheels of flame. Now he's being annoying, he keeps full restoring. I'm doing Psychics now. Psychic is mm, slamming some damage on this man as he no longer has any more max potions. And he sends in the boat that Hades rides to the underworld. As it goes invisible, hits a Phantom Force, which is very effective. I do hit a Psychic that KOs as Jintar comes. And that is the fish of all time. It body slams, paralyzes, it rings me out, takes my pockets, all my money. I hit a flame wheel, burn it, he withdraws it, he sends in his pill doom. Now, I kind of like pill doom. Man. He's hitting me with a little thrash, giving me a little bit of that stuff. I hit a little psychic, you know, another little thrash. Leaving me a little low, I got a little panic. Mimi Tuff's always good though. Get her in there, a little amnesia for that pill doom, but uh, that stat change isn't gonna matter if you're KO'd, my friend. Blizzard's not gonna connect because of disguise. Shadow Claw gets it low, and the burn from earlier finishes it off. And we beat Giovanni, that's the 8th gym leader. We have to go fight Blue Moon one more time before the Elite Four, and uh, he honestly got wiped. His team randomized into a bunch of garbage, and Yune destroyed it. So that was pretty sweet. And we can continue along to Route 26, right before Victory Road, and find a Dialga. Okay, okay, now watch this. You're not gonna believe this. I go over to my Pokeballs, and, you know, I got the Master Ball, but I throw a little Quick Ball just for some fun. And what? We just got a Dialga with a Quick Ball. One ball? Oh, man. This is why I showed the Mewtwo fight earlier. You would have thought, you would have never believed that. Oh, man. And then, of course, next we find a Groudon. Like, this is so awesome. I'm riding on my high horse after catching that Dialga with a Quick Ball. So I throw some Ultra Balls without doing damage. I'm like, yeah, I'll catch this Groudon, no problem. And it's actually not working out too well for me, so he's trying to rest at full HP. I'll give him some rest in this Master Ball. And yep, we just got two Legendaries in about a minute. And of course we're going to fuse them into this beauty, Dialdon. And for our last Pokemon to fill out the team after the deaths, we have Dugong and Smeargle. Just to have the starter Pokemon, we make it to the Elite Four, heal up, and we take on Lorelei. Now, she sends in a Mimivoir, and uh, we send out Dialdon. Now, first look at Dialdon. I'm going with a little Roar of Time. It doesn't connect as a Fairy type. You're going to see some Earth Power with a little Disguise blocking me. Play Rough doesn't do much, as our Earth Power does a little bit under half, which is unfortunate. Lava Plume does do great damage, and fortunately, it burns and faints without using a Max Potion as Lidish is up next. It catches a Lava Plume, that's a one-shot easy times. Miminat, you're gonna have to catch the same thing, but you do have a Disguise, and you split some pain. I'm getting my pain split all over this battlefield as I go for an Iron Tail, which takes it out. 
Up next is Mislia. I decide to go for an Earth Power, which does over half. Astonish doesn't do much. She full restores. I Lava Plume, that also does over half. A second one makes it faint as she sends in Miss Lava. Now, Miss Lava does have Levitate, so my move doesn't hit. It's a nice Shadow Ball, too, so I decide I need to switch out. I look over the field and I opt for Mimitoff because of the disguise. Fortunately, nothing connects. Shadow Ball does pull through a second time and does big damage as I connect with a Play Rough, which does minimal. Not liking my chances here, I switch out to Munate, just hoping it would use a fire type move, but unfortunately it's still spamming Shadow Ball, so I'm not in the best way. I don't know why she randomly decides to heal, but that lets us go for a Psychic, and then a second we outspeed and win that fight, and lead up to Bruno, who leads with Pidchu. Now this Pidchu, little bird electric vibe, I'm assuming it probably is flying in the air, so you know you're not hitting no Earth Power, so we roar some time on it as this Chekizard comes in. Makes my defense harshly fall, but I'm going to make sure he pays. He's going to make me pay with a Sucker Punch first. His Iron Tail does big damage. It becomes a Steel-type, so I go for Lava Plume, which is now super effective. He's now a Fire-type, and I go back to our Roar of Time. He's spamming his max potions. Now he's a dragon type Pokemon. The substitute comes out. I decide to go for Iron Tail as I'm hit by Sucker Punch. I miss. Sucker Punch connects again. Iron Tail finally does connect. The substitute takes some of the damage. Sucker Punches me again. I keep missing. Getting Sucker Punched in the face. I finally do take that annoying Pokemon out as this Aerodactyl is in. And this is actually a really cool Pokemon. It reminds me of a Pterodon from like Ark if you played Ark back in the day. Pretty sweet. Dougal, first look at this. He raises his speed. I hit a Surf, which does very minimal damage. Now, I'm assuming this is like a Ghost Flying, Ghost Rock type, maybe. So, a couple Ice Beams is putting work in. He actually responds with an Ice Beam. Kind of funny. We finally do take it down as Pori Dew comes out. And it's kind of funny seeing it with two little heads. I mean, any Pokemon with two little heads like that would be kind of funny. I wonder if a Doug Trio fusion would be like Doug Six Tile. <laughs> I'll have to figure that one out in the future. Now we're down to just the Pori Duo, and it goes for a Tri Attack, which does good damage. And, you know, it leaves me a little concerned. I don't want to lose a Pokemon this early in the Elite Four, so I switch into Magnetile. I'm hit by another Tri Attack, which does okay. I hit a Discharge, and the Discharge does its work as we get to Agatha. Now, as mean looking as she is, her team isn't as mean. She's going with the Fighting type. And normally you'd be like, wow, Fighting type? That could be pretty intimidating, pretty hard, but not when you have a Dialdon on your team. And when you can roar a time, put them back in time, all that stuff, and they're relying on Ryo Bells with a final gambit to try and take me down, that's just some cheap trick. Now this Makazam, it's all glitched up, so I'ma switch out. We got Mimi Tough, you know, we got a little wall, a little wall of defense, a little deflating balloon. And it bulks up and wow, look at it, it's got the muscles, all that stuff. Full restore for her, this Play Rough is going to get spammed here. He bulks up again, Play Rough connects, and we faint that boy. Now, we got a Noseferno. Playing rough with that fighting type, it's not going to last as it's super effective. This Gas Chop, it's also going to catch the same fate. And Agatha was no match for us. As we get to the final Elite Four member, Lance. He leads with his Trub Bunny. And I use an Earth Power as Amnesia outspeeds. She is left super low, so she full restores. I hit a Lava Plume assuming the store was coming, and then I was going to do an Earth Power, but she full restored anyway. Kind of annoying. Another thing like Final Gambit, it explodes on me. Pause. That kind of sucks, but we're still healthy. This Mudipede is going to catch it. Snorosaur, I do like the little orange berry on the back. That is extremely cute as it hits me with a high horsepower. I'm running low on PP with my moves, but Dialdon's still trugging along. This Curse Sprout, it's gonna catch some fire. Mewmer, it's pretty much just Grimer. I don't know what's different, <laughs> but he's still pretty neat. Now, Earth Power is gonna connect. Critical hit, overkill, super effective. Blue Moon, 
final battle leads with his amazing Tyrandrigion. Uh, that's my best attempt, but it is really cool. Now I use an Earth Power, it does super duper damage. This is a great way to get those full restores out of his pocket. We get a couple of them down, we keep hitting Earth Powers, he keeps sealing up, so you know, he's gonna run out eventually. I'm gonna run out of PP eventually, as he hits an Earthquake, which does good damage. Now, this has gotta be his last full restore, and I'm down to one of my last Earth Powers, which does take it out. Now he sends in his channel Mega, and it does finish off our legendary fusion which is unfortunate but you knew it was gonna happen eventually the way he just stood in there it was magnificent but we got another legendary fusion Munate who's not gonna go down without a fight now he's got an ape of his own but an unape and this thing's catching psychics it's fainting down as a ghost comes in I got recover I'm back to full as thunder connects it does big damage I hit a future site, just hoping I can last a few turns to do some good damage. I just sit here and keep recovering, waiting for that inevitable, beautiful move, but I don't get it as Munape faints, unfortunate. Now Mimi Tough, you've gotten me so far with your beautiful disguise. He's scared, he knows. He's seen this Pokemon before, so he sends in his Zap turn, gets that ability, the agility going. And this Discharge is not going to hurt, but Play Rough will, as I take down his Legendary Bird. He comes back to his Electricos, it hits a Thunderbolt, decent damage. My Shadow Claw is super effective now, as the starter we've seen many times. Ferdor, the normal type, smart, get my Ghost type out to, you know, not hit him. Love that idea. And yeah, look at that. Look at me being big brain. But I do go for a Night Slash, which does work. He hits a Baton Pass, which is a little spooky, but Night Slash does connect on this Pokemon as well, taking it down. And of course, it comes down to Ferdor. As you can see in this battle, Ferdor is 71. The level cap 69, so it did work for our hard mode. And we won our hard mode on our first attempt. Our amazing team, the Dialgun. The Magnetile, Munate, Genark, Dougal, Womp Womp, and Mimi Tough. Now, if that's not a team, I don't know what it is. Thank you guys. See you next time.